Hey guys, this is Kime Interviews. We are here with Tonight Alive. If you guys could introduce your name and position in the band. Uh, I'm Matt. I play the drums. I'm Cam. I play bass. Uh, I'm Jake. I play guitar. Awesome. So we're going to start off with some icebreakers real quick, get things going. And so first off, if you could save the world with one other person, who would it be? Oh. Iron Man. Oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> Go, give me a sec. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, Gandhi. Gandhi. Yeah, oh awesome. dang! Dalai Lama yeah. or something like carry him up a mountain. I don't know. <laughs> a book gets written on it, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know if it'd be the most like uh, enforcing. I think he'd be doing most of the work as well. <laughs> <laughs> He's yoked, right? Gandhi's super yoked. Um, so, like buff, you know? Oh, oh. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> My SoCal lingo is yeah, coming yeah, into play. <laughs> Ouch, sorry about that, guys. Um, and then, uh, all right, second icebreaker. If you could replace one living artist with someone from the dead and resurrect them in their place, who would you choose? Oh, dang. Uh, probably get rid of um, Skrillex <laughs> and replace him with Mozart. Okay. Bring back that's some classical. That's a total <laughs> opposite, so that's a good one. I don't know. I don't even know who I hate at the moment. Right, well, I'll tell you some favorites on the on this segment. Nicki Minaj, Justin Bieber. Uh, he was top of my list after yeah. this. Really. Yeah, I was thinking like Miley Cyrus, something kind of shitty at the moment. Yeah, yeah I'd bring but, back Bob Marley yeah, nice for yeah. to replace someone like Nicki Minaj. Yeah. Or a lot of people. Yeah. Oh wow! Well, can I just yeah, people. Actually, 100%. For, all, for all three of us, people. people. Let's just get rid of people and bring anyone bring back. Anywhere, back with any, any sort of talent. <laughs> Any anyone who released the song in the past ten thousand. Bring back Shaggy. <laughs> yeah, bring back Shaggy. I don't know, he's not dead he's yet. Not yeah, I know, but let's bring him back anyway. <laughs> <laughs> His career's dead. Yeah. <laughs> All right guys, so what has this tour been like? You guys enjoying it so far? Yeah, it's been great man. It's our first US headliner. We've been in here like eight or nine times now. Um and yeah, the response has been insane. We've got three shows left and then we go back home. Yeah, yeah it's kind of wild, man. Like this is the first place we ever played in America. We were over here recording our first album in 2011 in January, and um, we played a show here with the Wonder Years. It was the first time we had no album out. We were unsigned, so it's kind of wild yeah. to be here after everything we've been through. You know, like eight eight trips later, yeah. <laughs> and now we're headlining Chain Reaction. So yeah. it's great. Yeah, what's that like? I mean, this lineup is a little bit more pop than uh, previous times that you guys have came out here, and Warp Tour especially is more of a heavy thing, but how is that, guys, touring with a little bit like more poppy of artists? I uh, know we never really like thought about the genres too much because we've we've always toured with people who we technically don't fit with, and it doesn't like matter if someone's pop or heavy or whatever. Like we just kind of we love all the bands on the tour, and you know, um, it's just a really good bill. It's working really well, and yeah, yeah, we're having a lot of fun. So. Yeah, every everyone on the tour is is a dude. There's no that guy or anything yeah. like that. So yeah, it's going really well. It's good. Uh, so what's it like having a majority of your tours out here in America when home is in Australia? Um, it's it's it gets tough sometimes, but I guess it makes going home that much sweeter because mm -hmm. you do really miss it after a while. I mean, we've been away from home for about two and a half, three months now. And so we're we're really looking forward to getting back and having yeah. some time off. Every time you do it, you finish an American tour, you're like, cool. We just like worked our yeah. ass off for like yeah. two months. Whereas an Australian tour is kind of like, you finish it, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah. like, that was really quick. Dude, so. like, yeah, we've we've had a really big year, so it's you know we can all go home. Like we've done a hard day's work, and it's summer back there as well. So we'll be surfing yeah. and we'll be seeing our friends and family. It's gonna be sick. Yeah. What's the best and worst part about touring in America? Uh, I'd say the worst on, at times is the food yeah. Um, yeah. and also just like the monotony of maybe like waking up at a Walmart or like mm -hmm. something like it's just it's hard yeah. to find stuff to do because we're so busy all the time and if you're not if there's a day off it's usually driving and stuff you know so um, I don't know like I said that's like yeah, the worst we don't part. really get to see much of the country which kind of sucks like yeah, which people are like oh my god you yeah. guys have been to the state so many times like where's the best place to go we're like I don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's part of a venue and the block around and yeah that's it, man. and a walk to Starbucks, Starbucks or yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> best a lot of Starbucks in this country yeah. Yeah. yeah but I guess yeah the best part would just be the fact that you can literally tour for two months like straight and yeah. just cover and see meet so many people and I don't know, yeah, really get yourself a, out there. Market, and you yeah. you learn so much about yourself and you grow as a band and as a musician every time you tour America just because it's just such a hard place to tour and it's, you really have to work hard and 
Yeah. It seems like everywhere is kind of different over here. Like you've got like south, like southwest, you've got Cali, like up north. Everyone's everyone's kind of got their different sections and everywhere you go is kind of different. Yeah. So it, it, it mm. keeps you interested. What's easier about touring in Australia? You notice it's a little bit harder. That's what you mentioned. So what's a little bit easier in Australia? Uh, it lasts for like two it's weeks the and then way. you're done. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just the comfort of being home as well. Yeah. Like you just you're driving and you're familiar with like the landscape and you know all the best spots in each city to go to and yeah. you know we've got friends in every city as well it's just nice really mm. australia is good there's always good shows and yeah. and the weather's usually always good as well it's yeah it's good do you guys think fans are crazier in australia than here i reckon fans are crazier here to be honest yeah definitely like we like already got a pretty good decent line of kids out the front and i know they're all just like really good like Matt's it's Matt's birthday today actually yeah and, um, happy brought, birthday like, Thanks, they brought it like they brought a bunch of gifts like they brought a pinata oh, yeah, and all sorts dude. of stuff just like little stuff like that so cool uh, yeah. so <laughs> like we had we had kids up like further up north when it's freezing cold lining up since like midday and we're like we're, like we just got there like <laughs> I don't even know how long you've been there for as well like kids come out and I don't know like they don't seem to care as much you know everyone's there just have a good time and like appreciate the music and stuff like that yeah and they'll, they'll come to as many shows as they can as well yeah. like if, if the next tri- if the next show is like three hours away or five they'll sometimes they'll just make the track because they want to like so that's cool <laughs> just a good yeah. music community out here. so you guys this new recent album the other side how have you guys thought that that compares to your previous releases fan wise like their reception to it uh they've definitely jumped on board really quickly like especially like we've only been playing a, cu- a couple of the songs live mm-hmm. but especially like lonely girl it's like kids have learned the lyrics so quickly and like we've had so many positive responses like over twitter and in person and people being like this record like is helping me so much with stuff so even, even songs that aren't that aren't singles like we're playing the fire and and don't wish and stuff and kids know like all the, all the lyrics and it's just like it's like another step up live as well playing the the new songs and yeah, it seems to be doing really well. Yeah, like we did, we made a decision not to play too many new songs because we, you know what, when a band puts out a new album and all they want to do is play new songs and the fans are like, oh. Yeah. But it's kind of like the opposite for us. Like everyone's been kind of telling us, oh, I want, I want to hear more songs. Like I want you to play more. So we're like, well, that's a good sign. They obviously <laughs> like, yeah. they like the new songs. So, so next, next year we'll add it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so maybe a change next time. Yeah. Uh, so do you feel that this album, The Other Side, is the most accurate representation of your guys' sound that you want to really head for do you think it's getting that much closer to like your favorite album yeah it's just we just keep taking the steps and like really trying to find a really good combination of just um, easy listening great music and also just stuff that translates heavy live you know because we never wanted to go to buttercup and like we always wanted to keep that edge in our music but also like I think the songs are just like a lot better written now and um, it shows when the kids are just reacting to the lyrics more and just the singing along and you know I think we took a huge step with this album and I think once we tour on this for like the next year and a half, I think who knows where the next step will be. So, yeah. Just see what happens, really. <laughs> for sure. And so, um, did you guys do anything differently approaching the studio or in the studio writing this album than you did with previous releases? Yeah, we did. We we wrote a lot of it on the road whilst we were touring, and the recording of it it was over about three or four months all up. But we had to tour. In between it, we had two or three tours, uh, one here um, in the UK and Europe. But um, we uh, actually had the chance to go in and do pre-pro into this house in Australia. It was a sick house. It was on the beach, like acreage. Mm. We didn't have like a, a sound curfew or anything, so we could do whatever we wanted. Had a big mm. house. We'd cook like we'd live together. And then, yeah, we had about two weeks of just being able to jam the songs which we hadn't been able to do for so long. Mm. And the first album, it was it was different. There was a lot of pressure and, um, like, pre-pro was only three days, so we were really rushed and stuff like that. But we actually had the time to, like, chill, like, comfortably and, and jam the songs out, and I think we definitely got the best out of it. Yep. Um, I remember recording drums and the day after we flew to the UK to do a tour, and then the day we got back, Fakai went up, like 10 hours where the house was and started tracking guitars mm. again so it was a, it was a bit busy but it worked out really well we're really happy with it yeah. 
it was just good to be able to surf every day. <laughs> yeah. You guys big surfers? Uh, Maddie is. Uh, Cam and I tried to pick it up. We weren't the best, but we'll, we'll keep trying. We've got a, a month and a half off at home, so we, we've got a, a fair yeah. while to get back into it. Is it totally different surfing here than it is in Australia? Because I know it's probably... Yeah. surfed here eh? like we were saying before we don't really get time because whenever we're over here we've either got to go back home to do a tour or go to the uk for a tour or something like that so i'd love to be able to get some time to to surf out here or, or just chill whatever yeah so what's a favorite off this album that you guys like playing live specifically for each and every one of you guys uh for me it'd be the fire just like a really good high energy song and the gut the guitar parts are fun drums are fun it's got a pretty sick bridge to it like yeah. musically and like the kids seem to love it as well so yeah i don't know like they're all all the new songs are fr freaking awesome <laughs> like <laughs> but like for us to play at least like it's just like because we were playing the old ones for such a long time and you know they just feel so fresh to play and you know lonely girl's great because it's a single but as i sang before like, it's not like a light song it's still really heavy and yeah. it's kind of like a really nice balanced song and it's just like definitely a highlight in the set when we get to that so I would, I would agree with both of them. Hey? <laughs> everything. You like playing everything. I, do, man. I love playing the new songs. All right. So what sort of message do you guys like sending out to listeners? Is it changing through album to album or is it kind of staying the same? It hasn't changed. It's just developed. Like the first album was kind of a lot about um, not letting uh, judgment get get you down and let, let that um, don't let that suffocate your individuality. You know, like you really have to just push through that. And then this album kind of covers a lot of like it's called the other side obviously so it's about you know getting uh, yeah getting yeah. through those problems and coming out the other side in that using that same mentality from what he's so scared of to get through those problems and just like it's a lot about growth and just i don't know like resilience and almost like i don't know just and doing a, yeah. like doing things for yourself like yeah you know. acceptance as well just finding out who you are and jenna always preaches that at our shows and saying you know like at Tonight Life Show is no place for judgment you know this is a place where you can go and be yourself and regardless of whatever type of person you are and how you want to look and act and you know I guess that's the core of what we do yeah yeah so another question that I have for you guys is just like the basic things that um, people wonder um, fans have asked well asked me to ask you guys but is there anything that you guys face that um, you think is different from other bands being Australian and having a female vocalist because those are two things that aren't very common in um, the scene right now I mean like when we first started like we um, all the tours we were put on were like with metal bands you know and yeah. even back even back in Australia and you know that didn't stop us from playing the sort of music that we liked and that didn't stop us from jumping up and down or trying to get people to clap their hands like that it didn't matter like it's kind of like what I was just saying before, like you really have to have faith in yourself and what your message and what your band is and we grew up loving that sort of music and we've just tried to carry that through and now, you know, kids that come to our shows really enjoy that, like, and I don't know, I guess, though they, that was challenging though at the start, like we had to play a ton of shows where we were just like doing this and then the crowd would just be like this and we were like, yeah, oh, fuck, first, you know, like, the, one <laughs> of the first tours we did over here was the Fearless <laughs> Friends tour with, um, Bless the Fall headlining, The oh. Word Alive, Motionless in White, like, Chunk and, and Chunk, Chunk yeah. man, and, and we were on it, and so it was like, it was, we had to do those tours and stuff, and we got through them all, but like, there was, like, some shows were like, we look back on them now, and yeah. now, and we just, but like, every show wow. that we did, we picked up a couple of people that liked it, yeah, and that's it all that exactly. mattered, like, the and people in the back with did. their arms crossed, that's what we're trying to say, like, it doesn't matter what they think, because that doesn't, you know, don't let it, don't let it stop what you do, and so, yeah. yeah. Do you have a specific city in mind when you think of these people with their arms crossed in the back? Is there a certain city that's really hard? We like a of hard, we had a really hard show in Nashville on the Suffy tour. Yeah, um, that uh, yeah, we we did this. We had we played Nashville a bunch of times, and like we got on stage and halfway through the set, Jenna's like, you know, so who who saw us? Warp tour or something like that? And every show, people were like, you know, yeah, yeah, I saw you, blah blah. This silence, just like <laughs> I think one person made like a patronizing <laughs> like. Yeah. So that was that was a bit rough. That, that was, was that was. <laughs> One out of a, a, a few hundred, though. Like, yeah, we. But yeah, yeah. we've generally had like the last two years. We've had great tours and and everything's been picking up like really yeah. well. So <laughs> we've got enough momentum to you know be an established band now. So it's all good. And um, one of the last questions is, what is one thing about your band that people might commonly misinterpret or misunderstand? Um, I don't know what people think about us, but I always want people to know that, like, we definitely started, like, 
from the bottom like we were just a garage band like I know a lot of bands are but some bands you know get a lot of help at the start or have a lot of money to start with I don't know or pre-existing people in other bands whatever but like we were just like this band of kids like we all were friends we all loved yeah. the same music and we just started from the garages and literally built our way up from there we writing songs recording them touring getting slowly clawing away overseas and just spending all our money and like committing like 100% to this and I just I want people to know that like if, when sometimes people say to us oh you guys are blown up so quickly and we're just like no like no, we haven't, you, yeah. you know you might think blowing up in a year or two is a, a quick amount of time but for being on the road for that year or two it's the slowest thing ever and I mean it's hard and I just want people to know that yeah we've, we've, we've almost know. been a band for almost six years now yeah. so and we've been 100% committed to it, all of us, like, yeah. from the start. So I think that's something that we want people to know. And lastly, guys, what's next for Tonight Alive? Where are you guys heading after this tour or recording-wise? Anything like that? Any fun stuff fans should know about? Uh, we fly home to play the Australian Warp Tour, which hasn't been back for 11 years now. So it's pretty exciting. And then we've got about a month and a half, maybe almost two months off, mm -hmm. back home. And then we'll start hitting the road for the album again. Yeah, we, um, we have tours booked here for the spring, uh, UK and Europe, and then uh, we're in the process of finalising the rest of the year, but yeah, we're constantly writing still for the next album, and yeah, it's ahead. not going to stop. <laughs> yeah. Riding on the road, right? Yeah. Always, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's where we live. <laughs> right, awesome, guys. Well, that is Tonight Alive, and this is Kai interview. so thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's the interview. Peace.